I have some extremely distressing news. We've just run out of wine. What on earth are we going to do about it? This is just one of a plethora of memorable lines from one of the most quotable films of all time, the 1987 classic With Nail and I. It's certainly one of my favorite films of all time. I've watched this film countless times and I never tire of watching it. It is so funny, so poignant, so melancholic, so true to life. Um, it, it, it It's a beautiful character study. It's a period movie. It's a um comedy of errors it's a it, it, it's it's so many things rolled into one um it, it's about the end of an age as well that's why there's an incredible tinge of melancholy about this film but above all it has such an authenticity to it because it is based on the writers and the directors experience of living as an out of work actor in london in the late 60s now bruce robinson um, was a young actor, had done a few roles, not much, but he got his big break with um, uh, uh, Zeffirelli's Romeo and Juliet, went to Rome, had a disastrous experience with Zeffirelli, and was so disillusioned, he came back to London, vowed never to act again, and he landed up sharing a dingy, awful apartment in Camden Town with a fellow unemployed actor, Vivian, a friend of his from drama school. And their adventures formed the basis of the script that he wrote. And in fact, his girlfriend at the time was um, Leslie Ann Down, who had made a name for herself. And she said, you know, you carry on writing the script. I believe in you and I'll support you. And to this day, Bruce Robinson has, has thanked her. And she even donated the Jag, which is in the movie. Um, so she was incredibly loving to him and supported him while he wrote this masterpiece. And he shopped it around, um, and eventually a friend of his, Paul Heller, an American producer, read it and loved it and said, look, if I can find the money for this, let's do it. And fortunately, Bruce Robinson had been given a break as a writer uh, to work with David Putnam um, years later after uh, the, his experience in this uh, flat in the 60s where he wrote the script. Um, he got his big writing break uh, doing The Killing Fields, which earned him uh, a BAFTA award for Best Screenplay and an Oscar nomination for The Killing Fields. And so the, the, the doors are wide open. The offers were coming in. He just wasn't interested. He was like, I, now that I have a bit of a name, I want to make this movie. And Paul Heller got him the money, suggested he directed it, and the rest is history. It is such a unique movie you know if you, you could never remake this film because it just the elements that come together the cast the script the direction uh, the locations the the feel of the film the feel while they were making it is so unique um this film can never be duplicated um the casting is absolutely pitch perfect in the lead role of with nail uh bruce robinson cast a complete unknown richard e grant uh, who's actually from Swaziland. I had the fortune of making two movies with him. Um, and he is perfect in this role. You can't imagine doing anyone else doing this role. And interestingly enough, there were tons of great actors that were interested. Bill Nighy, uh, um, uh, Kenneth Branagh, to name but a few. And But the minute he did, gave his audition, Bruce Robinson, in his heart, thought, this is the right guy. But he strung him along, made him come back eight times, got him drunk, because he'd never been drunk in his life, he actually was allergic to alcohol, Richard E. Grant, and got him drunk so that he would have a chemical memory of what it is to be drunk, because he had to play an alcoholic in the movie. And I've, I've really seen such a good portrayal, you know, because people playing alcoholics always kind of go over the top and play the symptoms where an alcoholic is actually trying to be sober, he's trying to act sober, because he doesn't want people to know he's drunk. So it's, it's, it's a difficult thing to pull off, and he pulls it off with great aplomb. Um, Paul McCann also perfectly cast as the eye character Marwood the only person with a name um, of the two in the film uh, and and interestingly enough um, his role is the more of the straight man but he's equally good you know it's this is a, such a brilliant um, 
double act by these two actors it's very rare in any film that you've had you have such an interplay such chemistry between these two actors and the characters it is it is a a, a beautiful thing to behold um the other roles uh, supporting roles brilliantly played richard griffiths can't think of anyone else to pull off uncle monty uh and rolf brown as uh, the drug dealer Danny. I'm going to speak about them a bit later. So the story in a nutshell is two out-of-work actors in London in the late 60s living in absolute squalor in Camden Town. Now when the film opens they are kind of facing this intense cold and you know ending up rubbing themselves with deep heat and drinking lighter fluid to stay warm. Um, the sink has never been ventured into. It's just piled full of you know and rats it it is horrific um bruce robinson paints such a dingy grimy kind of realistic portrait of the 60s you always kind of see these glossy 60 movies this is not that this paints a far more realistic dingy grimy kind of coming to the end of an age the death of an age uh, and this is mentioned several times in the film danny even says you know london is a city coming down from its trip and there are going to be a lot of refugees. And it really is about the end of an age, the end of an ideal. Um, and so there's a real sadness about this movie, a poignancy uh, amidst all the hilarity, a real undercurrent of melancholy. And this pervades the whole film. So you have these two misanthropic losers, um, very kind of, you know, fighting, bickering with each other, this intense rivalry, friendship, love, hate relationship. Um, and they've kind of had enough of Camden Town and living in squalor. And so Withnell manages to persuade his uncle um, to lend them the key for his holiday place out in the Cotswolds. And they want a, a holiday away, get away from the city and get away from the plague. But of course, they take the plague with them. And it's a disaster. Um very no sooner they arrived it's pelting with rain they're chasing the farmer to try and get some food they say we've gone on holiday by mistake um you know stop saying that with now they're just bickering at each other the whole time um starving they eventually catch a chicken they're like how do we make it die i mean it's like these two are not equipped to deal with um life in the <laughs> in the rural areas chasing fish with shotguns um and uh, you know, rubbing up the locals the wrong way. Um, and eventually Monty comes to visit them, but of course it's an ulterior motive because Withnell has told Monty that Marwood is actually gay and that, um, you know, Monty can have his way with him. Uh, and it's the only way he would get the key out of him. So it becomes this very kind of awkward, uncomfortable weekend as Monty is kind of pushing himself on this poor young actor which is exactly what happened to Bruce Robinson that's what Zeffirelli did to him apparently he arrived in London and Zeffirelli was all over him and saying you know are you a whatever I can't remember they actually put that line in the movie um where where Uncle Monty asks him are you a whatever I can't remember the specific line so that is also directly autobiographical this uncomfortable I know as an actor um in the industry one sometimes has these encounters and but it's played so beautifully and Monty is not played as a cliche you know uh, maybe with another actor another script it would have come uh, uh, across as being stereotypical but this is not it's a poignant um, a hilarious performance but full of pathos full of regret full of sadness beautiful performance by Richard Griffiths she probably should have won an Oscar for best supporting actor um, and so uh, their holiday unwinds, unravels, and so does their friendship. And they separate at the end of the movie. And it's this movie is really all about it's it's a it's a coming of age. It's an end of a friendship. It's an end of an era. It's the dying of dreams. There's a decay to this movie, a, a melancholy, and this is beautifully realized in the performances in an absolutely magnificent script, in the sort of dark cinematography a beautiful score by david dunkus um the cinematography by peter hunnan is is really um crisp and 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 beautifully realized simple workmanlike 
uh, cinematography and editing, but the real star is the performances, the script and the direction. Every line rings true. Every line is lived in. That you can feel that this this actually happened. These characters, um, you, you feel Bruce Robinson's kind of like self-deprecating years of self-abuse and drunkenness um, and trying to find his feet as an actor, as a human being. Um, it's just, it's a pitch perfect comedy stroke drama. Um, there's so many wonderful stories surrounding this film. Um, the filming of it, they wanted to close down on the first day. Dennis O'Brien of Handmade Pictures said, you know, this is not funny, you know, and, and Bruce Robinson said, I'm going to walk off if you don't allow me to tell my story. And fortunately, some of the other producers uh, convinced O'Brien to let Bruce Robinson have his way. And thank heavens they did, because um, we are treated to a magnificent classic, a, a movie that's so, that just resonates with so much truth. The monologue that is delivered at the end from Hamlet just is the perfect end to this film. Um, who who could have kind of summed up melancholy and the existential state of man better than Shakespeare? Um, what a piece of work is a man. And what a piece of cinema is with male eye. It really is a brilliant film. It launched Richard E. Grant's career. Um, and it is remembered all over the world by fans. People even still visit the Cotswolds to, to the locations. There's a drinking game based on the movie. Um it's uh, th this is a film that re has resonated, has picked up followers over the years, and has become a timeless classic. Um, uh, it really encapsulates the '60s. You know, Danny, the drug dealer, even says London is a city coming down from its trip, and there will be a lot of refugees. And this is summed up so brilliantly in the metaphors, visual metaphors in the movie. Um, Every line weighed, every, it's so sharp, so nuanced, the dialogue between the characters. Um, this is a one-off classic, a, a stupendous movie. I can't speak more highly uh, about it. It really, it really is a film to watch and then watch again.